Hi, everybody. Welcome to the SEO Kitchen Show. I'm your host for this event. I'm Neha Devanji. Um, and we have a wonderful panel today. We are just going to give it 10 seconds for more people to join in. Um, and we are going to have this real fierce discussion where we are going to discuss various flavors of building these awesome SEO recipes. Uh, and we are going to hopefully prepare a good enterprise and strategy salad this evening. So, uh, so let's begin. I'd love to introduce you to uh, to uh, to our panel to our panel today. We have a very very interesting lineup uh, in our panel, and we have Bjorn Darko uh, all the way from Berlin. Uh, Kevin in uh, Indig, he's from Chicago, and or Paolo, and uh, Andor is again from Berlin. And Ellie, who's currently right now in Israel, and he's escaping the heat. So uh, feel free uh, to ta to use hashtag SEO Kitchen Show throughout this event uh, and tag us, like us, um, you know, post comments, post your key takeaways on Twitter, and ask any questions that you have in the chat box. Uh, we would be uh, monitoring that, and we would uh, answer them uh, at the end. So uh, I'm going to uh, let our panelists, uh, you know, uh, give a little bit of introduction and we're going to start with Bjorn. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, straight from Berlin. My name is Bjorn Dako. I'm the head of product and SEO at Ladenseile. Ladenseile is one of the leading product comparison platforms in Germany. Um, I, I used to work for Searchmetrics, um, um, where I was also leading uh, the product management, but also the consulting unit at Searchmetrics, um, originally from Hamburg. I think it's the most beautiful city in, in the world. Prove me wrong. Um, I'm also hosting a uh, podcast called SEO Presso. Most of the talks are in German, but I also had, for example, Eli uh, already on the podcast, um, some American and some English uh, versions there. So give it, a, give it a listen. Awesome. Welcome, Bjorn. Uh, and Andor, why don't you go next? Yeah, sure. So my name is Andor. Um, I'm doing SEO since, I don't know, more than 10 years. I'm an independent consultant based in Berlin, Germany. Um, I'm on call and Majestic Ambassador, um, having been part of the judging panel of the European Search Awards and Global Search Awards this year. And I'm doing actually everything around strategic SEO, technical SEO, so streamlining um, strategies, improving technical conditions, train teams, um, improved processes, things like that. So still in love with, you know, uh, deep SEO topics. That is impressive. And uh, Kevin, why don't you go next? Sure. Kevin, as you mentioned, calling in from Chicago. Um, I'm the director of SEO at Shopify. Um, and before that, I worked at a company called G2, where I worked very closely with the sales team. So this was an enterprise company and very excited to contribute today. Yeah, Shopify. Oh, my God. All our clients are based on Shopify as well. So I'm sure we've got <laughs> lots and lots to learn from you today. Uh, Ellie, awesome. why don't you go next? Hey, guys. Eli, uh, live in Texas, but currently in Israel, escaping the heat, like Neil mentioned. I am a, not an SEO consultant, but more of a strategic growth advisor. So really helping companies to understand if there is an SEO opportunity and then partnering typically with product teams in building out those opportunities from a product standpoint. And I wrote about my approach to SEO in my book, Product Led SEO, which I really wrote because it was, I thought it was going to be a thick business card and my family was going to do me a favor of buying. But I've been so touched that so many in the SEO community have bought it and read it. And still tweet about it. So thank you, everyone. And, and you know, I love OnCrawl. Uh, an OnCrawl ambassador, I think it's just a, a natural fit when I work with companies and tell them to build out large-scale websites. It's they need OnCrawl, and if they don't need OnCrawl, that's typically not the kind of company I can work for. They can just do basic SEO, or in many cases, they don't even need to do SEO at all. So like conversation about enterprise SEO and how enterprise SEO is different. I'm all about that. And I, I don't even think we have enough time to make this conversation go because we could do talk. I think all four of us could talk about this for years. Yes, that's that's so true. So moving on, we are excited to, to get started. 
So the first question is that why should we even bother talking about enterprise SEO separately from SEO in general? Are there any differences that, it, that really exist? Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, sure. Happy to jump in. Um, there are definitely some some differences. And in my mind, the biggest difference is in the way that SEO contributes to revenue. So when you when you compare an enterprise business to a e-commerce business, for example, then you pretty quickly understand that in, e in, in e-commerce, SEO is very front and center because there's a direct path to revenue, right? It's, it's very traffic very quickly translates into revenue. On the enterprise side, it's not always that clear, right? When you, when you take a company like Salesforce, one of the enterprise uh, you know, best practices or, or biggest examples, um, it's much more questionable how much SEO traffic actually contributes to top line revenue and how much it contributes to a deal. And that's why it's a completely different approach from an internal stakeholder management perspective, from an attribution perspective, and how you kind of sell the SEO work. And that's the biggest difference in my mind. Yeah, I, I would like to add, like, um, like from a high level, that's totally correct. If we if we go down on on the on the operational level, I think also the scope of projects is way way different than you know if you work for SMBs, for example. You have bigger scale project project that essentially also you need to prove the impact on SEO traffic and also revenue um, in enterprise. And because SEO is often considered as a small, you know, traffic channel or something that contributes to traffic. So you have to work on a bigger scale. Often it's also that you have an international scope. So it's not just like, you know, one site that you work for in, in the States. Sometimes it's also across the globe. So you also have to, to you know, deal and manage uh, cross-functional teams across the globe. So you have an international setup, which makes it a bit more harder to, to do stuff. And I also personally believe that you need different skills for, uh, as an SEO uh, because you need to be more like a manager, more like a politician, yeah. um, where you need to discuss with stakeholders across the globe uh, completely different than rather than sitting in a small company somewhere. Yeah, totally, totally agree with that. And I would add, actually, you know, everything regarding communication and processes is a different kind of style in enterprises than it is maybe in your, your daily, daily uh, um, B2C shop or whatever it is. So as you said, the international thing is definitely one layer of, of uh, differences. But also, you know, when you, when you, like you said, you have maybe 24 lang uh, countries. So and, and maybe you have a headquarter and you have to talk with all of them and you have to, you know, make the uh, stakeholder management with that. So um, you really need to have a different mindset, I think, when you work with enterprises. You need to understand enterprises. You need to understand how they, you know, how processes are working there, how communication is working there. And um, I mean, coming from, you know, a, a very uh, proactive maybe SEO approach, you really have to settle and understand actually this kind of business world because it is different than anything else. Yeah, and, and, and Andrew, you nailed it there. Like, you know, I've worked with clients that they've worked with SEO consultants in the past. And, you know, one of them in particular, they'd worked with a consultant and they had an audit, which they never opened. So they paid, I don't know, $50,000 for the audit they never opened. And then my favorite example is a, a company that they had hired a content marketing agency who spent, or they spent $4 million to write the content and it was in a Google Drive folder. So enterprise SEO is really about building something and creating a revenue channel. And I, I think diplomacy and your ability to get things done and be able to manage a roadmap is so much more important than you know, this is the way the Google algorithm works. And, and, you know, this is what happened in the latest update and we need to do eat and we need to do all these things. It's really about how do you rally people to your side? How, when, you know, the CEO reads about a Google algorithm update in the Wall Street Journal that the algorithm update happened six months ago, how you can calm him or her down and tell them that it doesn't matter or how you can get that new PM that read an SEO book and it's like, I know how the algorithm works and I'm going to build all this stuff and I don't care that you do SEO. How do you make that PM go back in the corner or how do you get the engineer who you know refuses to do something because they know better than you, like how do you rally them to your side? So, you know, from my experience, both you know in-house you know, for years and then now as a consultant, 
I don't really need to know SEO that well because I just need to know how to get things done and really bring in a little bit of that expertise and help ship things to the end of the line. And that's how you're going to drive revenue. So you can have the greatest SEO skills and you can optimize the hell out of your own personal website. But when you get into an enterprise, that might not even matter if you don't have the soft skills. Well, that's a very, very interesting take. Uh, you know, we've seen different uh, facets to this answer, strategic, operational. Uh, moving on. So how does SEO play into business and marketing strategies at an enterprise level? And or why don't you take this up? Sure. So, um, I mean, uh, maybe it, it, it already starts with, you know, what is the awareness of, of, is of SEO within the enterprise company and what is the market share? What is the revenue that just, you know, done by SEO? So if you, if you, if you are an SEO agency in an enterprise with, you know, 2% market share or 2% of the revenue, nobody, you know, is interesting in you. So um, this is maybe something um, you, you will definitely have in mind. Um, of course, I mean, um, and on an enterprise level, as we have already said, everything maybe takes a bit longer, you know, and you need to have, uh, adapt to that, actually. Um, it is often also more, let me say, brand orientated. So you, 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 you're, getting, you're getting information about, well, this is not us. We can't do that because it doesn't fit to our brand. When SEO normally would say, I don't care about the brand actually in the first place. But on an enterprise level, the brand is much more value than anything else because they've built it maybe up for years. So, and, and of course, if I think, you know, everything around, um, as we said, so local, so local, local um, entities and, and all that stuff is, um, yeah, is taken into consideration here. I also think that like the, the way how enterprise companies consider SEO is actually deciding how, how powerful SEO can be. And I have seen companies that bake SEO already into their, you know, when, when they start up at the end of the day, right? So looking at all the data that we use within SEO, for example, can help so fundamentally if you bake that into the company from the very beginning. Products that you want to sell, is there even search demand for it? That you like products that you need to focus on first in order to scale, right? But then also use search data, for example, that you know, can also steer complete production cycles because, you know, based on seasonality, when a specific product is demanded the most. Or also, you know, you manage your entire warehouse when you see that demand is decreasing for specific products that you, you know, get rid of specific products, but therefore exchange them with, with others or steer entire marketing campaigns. Like all this demand data, and I, I wouldn't call it SEO data, I would call it rather demand data, can help if you bake that into the company processes. Um, and I've seen some companies that do it, but uh, I think this is something where we have to learn in the next years more and more to use it. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin, would you like to add to, to that? Sure. Yeah, I, I would underline everything that my colleague said previously. And maybe to add to that is, I, I think you can, I, I think you can simplify the role of SEO within an enterprise company. It's typically a lead generation channel, right? It's supposed to drive pipeline and bring business to the company. And that happens in a slightly different way than in other business models or at other types of companies, right? I would, I mean, also, I would also like to, to, to maybe define a, an enterprise company. And in my mind, it's typically a company that sold that, that sells, um, expensive products can, you know, mostly, mostly software, uh, but that specifically uses sales teams, um, to, to close those deals, right? They're big enough that people want to talk to a different person. Um, and that in my mind puts SEO in a specific position where the, the goal of SEO is to bring high qualified leads to those sales teams so that the, 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 the sales teams can then close them. Curious if, if any of my colleagues disagrees. I've been waiting the entire day for this. I disagree with you, Kevin. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 okay. yeah, I think the definition of enterprise is, is, um, is a little bit more broad than what Kevin's saying. I think enterprise SEO is really when you have more moving parts within a company. So a small business can be enterprise SEO, even if you have 10 employees, but the website generates millions of, of clicks per day. Uh, that would be uh, you know, amazing. But 
it, it's not necessarily the size of the website. It's not necessarily the size of the company or even the size of the revenue. It's really how does it function as a business? Like one of the interesting things, you know, about the internet age is that you can have companies that drive billions of dollars that don't have thousands of employees. They can be fairly small. And I think enterprise will go, will be really broad. It'll go from driving leads, like Kevin said, to driving sales, like Amazon drives sales, like they, they're e-commerce and clearly they drive sales. And they're, you know, I think they're the largest enterprise SEO challenge out there. So really anything where you have complex moving parts, I think falls into enterprise SEO. Anything that's just like a single page website, like a doctor's homepage is not gonna be enterprise SEO. A, uh, a blog, I don't think is enterprise SEO. A, um, a, a website for a pizza shop if they have one, is not enterprise SEO. Whereas if it's a website for 100 pizza shops, even if it's local, it's that would, I think, fall into enterprise SEO. So then going back to the question of like, how does it play into business? Like one of the things I do is, you know, I talk to a lot of companies and I love telling them that they shouldn't do SEO because this, at an enterprise, you need to prioritize. You, you have finite resources, whether that's people or money or, or just time in the day. And people have jobs where it's like a small business. You tell the, the CEO or the owner of the business they need to do something. So they work on Sunday. Not a big deal. They work, you know, they, they stay out the office later. At a larger business, you can't make an entire team now add another day to the work week. We have, we're going the opposite. We're going to the four-day work weeks. So there's, there's more moving parts. So I think when at an enterprise, you do need to think about the business goals and will SEO realize those business goals or are they better off using those resources on another channel and really think about obviously like, is there a customer? So if there's no customer for SEO, if it's a, you know, a very B2B kind of company that's, you know, selling something, no one's searching, then I don't think you do SEO. And that's where your marketing strategies and your personas really fall in. So I, I think when you think about enterprise SEO, it's not zero sum. It's not like you must do SEO and these are things you do. It's really, well, how does SEO factor into this? And, and really like, I like doing the, you know, the ICE analysis, where you're doing impact, confidence and effort on whether you should even be going after an SEO initiative rather than, well, the title tag is wrong, we must update it. I think you actually agree with me, Eli. Just want to oh, call that out. I was trying so hard to disagree. <laughs> I, I, I would just, uh, uh, Kevin, do you want to go against it? No, I think I think we're actually on the same page, right? I think I think we define enterprise as a business segment, large companies that sell expensive products, uh, often in combination with sales teams, and and SEO can play a significant role. I, th I think we're actually on the same page there. Yeah, I, I just wanted to 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 make a statement here as well because that's what 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 I tried to say in the beginning. Like, I don't think that within enterprise we should consider seo and then everything else because seo itself everything that we do data that we use the practices that we do everything that we from a strategic standpoint do needs to be merged with product and engineering with sales with quality management with everything you know because at the end of the day my goal for example as an in-house seo is that all the other departments do seo for me so that I need to do less, right? And I think that's the underlying statement here. So if you ask how does SEO play into the business and marketing strategies at the at the enterprise level, it needs to baked in and merge with each and every department so that they do SEO for you. That's that should be the end goal. I'm stealing that as a tweet. The other teams do SEO for me. Yes, please. <laughs> Those were amazing words of wisdom beyond. Um and moving on, are job titles for strategy-oriented SEOs at an enterprise level different? Why do you think that is? Uh, Ellie, would you like to start with this? Yeah, so I'm really passionate about jobs and like people doing SEO, making as much money as possible. And I, I think the, the titles of people doing SEO enterprises should be different, but they end up not being different. So therefore, people don't get paid as well as they should. So uh, I, I learned this not the hard way, the easy way, which is I was when I was at SurveyMonkey, I was originally reporting to VP of Marketing. I'd actually reported all over the place, but I'd reported to VP of Marketing and my boss left and I was no longer reporting to VP of Marketing. And I started directly reporting for whatever reason to the chief product officer. And the chief product officer set up a meeting with me and said they were looking at my job description and my, my title was online marketing as SEO manager, director of SEO or something like that. But I, in their job scaling thing, it was online marketing manager. 
And he said, he looked at it and actually I was a product manager. So therefore I was getting a $15,000 raise because that's a product managers did. So I'm doing the same job and I'm now making more money. So like, that was my epiphany is like, well, it really depends on how you call it and what team you're on. And when you think about it, like how much money you're able to make for the company. So too many SEO managers are called SEO managers and they report like maybe to a director of marketing who reports to VP of marketing and the job titles aren't really reflecting the impact they're making to the company. Whereas if they're in a small business, that person doing SEO may be a jack of all trades and may actually be the VP of marketing, but an enterprise, the, the titles should be different and they should be strategic and they should be managing revenue lines, but they don't. And I think you know, we as a community need to fix that by highlighting these and, and going after those jobs and, and really you know, advocating for ourselves. Absolutely. Beyond uh, you manage large teams would be very interesting to hear your take on this. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because I've been on a conference like a month ago where we actually had like a panel on discussing should SEO change in the name itself. And um, I think there are different directions and maybe just one concrete example as we do here at Ladenseiler. So when, when, when I joined Ladenseiler, I was hired as a global head of SEO because we operate in, 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 in 13 different countries. And we realized very, very uh, quickly based on the strategy that I put in place, that there's a lot of connection to product and engineering because I also follow as, I mean, Eli just put a name on it, um, product-led SEO, but that's also the way how I consider SEO can scale, right? So there was was a lot of connection to to product and the managers here actually said, it's the first, like when I put the, the strategy down, it's the first time that they see requirements for the product. So the head of product left, for other reasons and i was asked if i want to take over the product because we as ladenseiler are very dependent on on seo traffic um, or on organic traffic it's the biggest traffic driver the biggest profit driver and so on and so forth so it is an essential element for the product itself that it works and um, so i took over as a head of product um, now um, managing the entire front end area. So 32 people, engineers, product owners, and also SEO product managers. And the, what we are doing is really working on problems and concepts in order to improve, um, improve the product. And so it's not about SEO anymore. It, it, it's, it's not, it's about the product itself. It's about the user specific problems and specific you know, features that we want to build. And the good thing now is like, also for me, it's a big step because, you know, I bring SEO into product work itself. So we, we go into discovery. So there are two essential things in product management, discovery and delivery. Within discovery, you have an hypothesis, you go in there, you brainstorm among the team a specific problem, you frame a specific problem statement, and then you create a prototype out of, you know, your brainstorming and test it with users. In this process, there's already SEO um, influencing, already SEO baked in. So the thinking from an SEO perspective already goes into the product. And so we have started a year ago to do this and um, we have now had the last core update the Google core update and we were among the biggest winners also in Germany. And this just happened, you know, like this, I was actually looking forward to the update because I think with the new evaluation of everything that we have done with everything that we have cleaned up and everything that we have built new, this can't just be, this can, can just be a success. And, and it was at the end of the day. So we are not, we are not bothering about SEO topics itself anymore. We are rather thinking from the user and from the product perspective and that, seems to be successful so far so you think that you know what you're doing is more important than how you name it and actually the doc job description needs to be you know maybe adjusted uh, from an seo point of view to you know get a get a more importance and more more broader view i, I think so yes and uh, like I, i'm a strong believer that seo is the strongest contributor also to product so i think there will in future a, a closer merge between product and engineering um, there, but there might also be like, if you consider SEO just as a traffic channel, then there might also be, you know, SEOs more sitting on the marketing strategic point of view. But the thing is, I believe that, you know, SEOs itself should not 
you know, sit on an SEO level, but rather on a strategic level, VP, director, or also C-level, where they are responsible for either product or traffic uh, acquisition. I think it goes back to what you said earlier, Bjorn, where you, you mentioned something along the lines of like, SEO is kind of everybody's job, right? And I think it's it's really that the, the big question is probably, should there be an SEO team that's isolated or should SEO be a responsibility or maybe an outcome that several teams and, and roles share, right? And what I where I strongly agree with you is that I see the most successful companies in SEO having non-SEO roles who own SEO or who have responsibility for SEO. As you said, product manager is a good example uh, that works for a specific type of company. And then maybe maybe in another company, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's marketing as well, PR, brands, all that kind of stuff. And that's that's really what makes or breaks SEO in yeah, my mind. B- because one more thought, uh, sorry, one more thought, because I'm really passionate about this, right? We as SEO, especially in-house SEOs, I mean, at the end of the day, we are politicians, right? So we need, we, we, it's a cross it's a cross-functional discipline and we need to bring as much stakeholder together as possible and, and try to really steer, you know, specific things. The same thing as product managers also do. So they need to bring a lot of stakeholders together, you know, get an alignment for their ideas, observe the market and so on and so forth and bake that all into what they're building for the product. So essentially from, from the core itself, SEOs are not very different from product managers. And so that's yeah. why I think having this view, and we as in-house SEOs since years now, having this high-level view on the company itself and know whom to bring together and what disciplines need to bring together for specific product makes us actually mandatory to sit on a high-level strategic you know, seat in the company itself. Yeah, but just minute, like I, I've received this question on, on LinkedIn from people who read my book, it, this causes some issues with people who are not on product teams and they think of themselves as product managers. So just to be clear, this is this is the long game. You can't instantly go to your boss and be like, hey, change my title. I got lucky, but like most people aren't going to get lucky. Play the long game, you know, show how you're a product manager, give it six months, give it a year. Don't just wait five minutes and say, well, I just read this thing. I heard this thing in the OnCrawl uh, webinar and I'm ready to do it. So think long. Uh, don't, if you are a marketing team, you're where you're supposed to be, you know, maybe get another job and you know, at another place where you are a product manager, but think of this in the long view. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. So there are a lot of blurring lines between product management and SEO. And it's interesting that how roles and responsibilities are overlapping and how organizations are trying to uh, build a cohesive user journey based on great product with with good seo i one last thing (laughs) sorry because eli in the podcast that we did you nailed like one sentence that i can't get out of my head also is like eli said you know we do a lot of things as in-house seos we just happen to uh, generate traffic so it's not about focus generated in traffic we just do what we do in product and, and all the other disciplines and it just happens that we generate traffic and i think that nails it absolutely moving on the next question is what are some of the elements of enterprise seo strategy that should be universal but we generally don't see outside of enterprise companies uh kevin why don't you take this one yeah, I think you know. After this conversation, it really depends on how we define an enterprise company. If it's if, if we talking about the like the narrow definition that I gave earlier, expensive products, sales teams, SEO is a lead gen uh, uh, channel. Then I, I don't think there are crazy differences. To be honest, I think two that might stand out is that there is a, a lot of enterprise companies or more enterprise companies use products like a clear bid reveal to unmask IPs and understand the quality of traffic. The second one is that there, there might be a higher willingness to go after keywords with lower search volume or higher intent. If on the other hand, we define enterprise as just large companies, large sites, right? There's also an enterprise definition that says uh, companies with more than a thousand employees. So if we're talking about that, right, I think the the difference in in terms of strategy is just that 
everything needs to scale further, right? Technical SEO needs to scale further, content creation needs to scale further, and execution becomes even more important uh, in terms of scale. So I'll leave it there. There's a lot to go into, but I'll, I'll stop there to give everyone else a, a chance to speak. Sure. No, that's very, very um, uh, insightful. Uh, and or what, what, what do you think? Yeah, so uh, I, I will connect it to the, what uh, Kevin actually said with the with the size of the company, maybe. Yeah, so I remember one quote that I just uh, picked it up from from Nick Wilson, and he said, "Well, you know, if you are working for a forty billion company, uh, so um, well, for forty billion, you know, dollar company, then you know, talking about you know backlinks or something like that isn't isn't a topic at all. But talking about politics and po talking about you know." Um, how we approach things and make things, you know, as Kevin said, scalable, you know, I mean, they're, 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 they are the enterprise companies. When you want to, to publish a landing page, you need to do that in 24, 50 languages. So, because they have the policy that, you know, every language, right, every, every landing page needs to be there for, for every uh, language or so. So um, it, it really depends, um, as Eli also said, you know, on the, on the approach, it's, it's not always a size, I guess, but um, yeah. So um, and, and, and in the end, I mean, when you, when we talk about enterprise, I think as the, the the approaches regarding SEO are not that different. I think you know sometimes it's just ten times you know bigger. So you have to think more before before you you you, you act actually. Uh, um, one thing that I would like to add, what I saw um, for big enterprise uh, companies that are um, you know. I, like is a strategy that should be universal itself is like the usage of search data again like i see a lot of bigger companies for example when they you know get seo tools on board they're not using um, the ui of the tool they just use the apis to pull the data out of out of it and you know pull that into their data warehouse where they do modelings and 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 data um, calculations you know that steers inventory, for example, or also marketing campaigns. And I think that is something that is very smart. Of course, they have more money. They can, they, they, they can afford to also take this, this data, but really, um, you know, adding this data layer to their data warehouse data and making better decisions out of it. I think that is an enterprise SEO strategy that should be definitely universal. The one thing, like everyone said, it covered everything I'd say, but the one thing I just add is prioritization. So in smaller companies, and I've spent time at startups, you could just do whatever you want and you just, you know, implore on someone, well, just fix this. And like I, like I said earlier, so they stay a couple hours longer or they work on a weekend. At enterprises, you need to be really, really rigorous about scheduling and prioritizing. Because if you do the wrong thing, like if you prioritize a fix that doesn't create any impact, you've lost some capital that the next time there's an emergency, they're not going to do that. So in your own mind and in your own efforts, you have to always be prioritizing because there are a lot more moving parts and you have to use your own resources and your own time more efficiently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and this is also something that you learn in, in enterprise companies. Like, is this exactly what you said? It's like project management, also road mapping, the stakeholder management that we discussed before, and also the soft skills in communication with stakeholders, management and teams and stuff like that. This this also belongs to an SEO strategy at the end of the day when it comes to enterprise and should also be something that you learn in smaller companies as well, because I, I think you, you, you will succeed much faster if you have those skills. So if you have been an enterprise SEO or you are an enterprise SEO, I think you can add a lot if you join a startup as a next as a next company, for example. That's an interesting so, career trajectory. Sorry, somebody wanted to say something. No worries. I mean, sometimes uh, because, uh, you know, you are so totally um, actually um, forced, you know, to be better in prioritization because you may have only, I don't know, 10 development days a year or something like that, you know, and then you really need to start thinking, okay, what can make really an impact? So um, I totally under, underline that. Yeah, and, and like the one thing that I always run into when I, I you know talk to companies who've talked to other people doing SEO is they always ask about page speed and site speed. And I feel like everyone's smiling. So when it comes to enterprise, all of us and anybody doing enterprise know that's not something you're gonna bring up because it's so much effort and so much money that if it doesn't work, you've burned every single center of capital that you have. 
Whereas in a small company, they get all worked up by it and I don't know, they purchase more hosting or do something. No one ever comes back and says, so we spent an extra thousand dollars a month that it work out. But an enterprise, like there was a company I was talking to, someone else had convinced them that they needed to invest in site speed and they were prepared to spend $3 million on a data center. Like, <laughs> and that, that agency wasn't going to be around when that didn't work out and they didn't return that $3 million or more SEO traffic. So from a prioritization standpoint, it's hard to justify that unless the site is atrociously slow. And if the site's atrociously slow, they're probably not an enterprise. No, absolutely. Um, moving on, what are the types of data results that you want to see from an SEO project? And or why don't you go for this one? I mean, uh, I probably would say revenue. It's maybe one of the first things, you know. Um, this is especially as, and, and this comes actually, you know, this is a journey of SEO. So we have been a, you know, traffic, you know, uh, a channel actually. But we started about thinking about the product because we wanted to make more money, actually. We wanted to, you know, get more sales, more revenue. And this is maybe also why we started to really, you know, go deep into the product. We, we haven't been, you know, satisfied by just, you know, uh, pushing the, the, the traffic onto the page. We also wanted to, yeah, to play the money game well, actually. So revenue is definitely something I, I mean, if you can, if you can justify something with revenue, I, I would probably say everyone in the, in the sea level will listen to you. So, so you need to understand, you know, discussing that, that actual language. And beside from that, I mean, of course, there are other, you know, KPIs you may be interested in, I don't know, average transaction value or the, the, the typical SEO things, clicks, the time on site, whatever it is, how you, you know, need to measure actually the success, success of your, your campaigns. But um, first of all, I would always say it's revenue. Sure. Revenue is the key driver. We all agree. Uh, Kevin, what, what else do you think are the, are the main results and types of data? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really based on who you talk to, right? I, I think I, I very strongly agree with Andor. Uh, whenever you basically talk to someone outside of SEO, revenue is the language that matters, really. But if you speak about, you know, if you talk internally or even with teams that you need, uh, or whose support you need, like engineering, design, content writing, whatever, then sure, you want to you include some other metrics and data. And the, the art is really, like this is what, something that every enterprise SEO should master in my mind, is to build a set of leading and lagging indicators that all roll up to revenue, right? So it can go down to the impressions, rank, it can be SEO metrics, but you need to build a model where those metrics roll up to actual revenue. And then you can speak about how to drive leading indicators with other teams, right? Like how can, stuff like core web vitals, if, if, it, if it's useful actually in your business, you can use those metrics to talk to engineering teams uh, or stuff like ranks when it comes to content or I don't know, clear scope, grade, whatever, whatever metric is relevant for the levers and drivers in your business, you can use those. But when it comes to speaking to stakeholders, C-level, VPs, revenue should be the only thing you, you, you mention because they don't care about anything else, really. Absolutely. Uh, Bjorn, would you like to add uh, to this? Uh, I think it's all correct. I, I just, you know, sometimes it's really hard, especially if you work with content projects, especially when it's, you know, you're building a magazine, for example, right? If you would put revenue as a key success uh, driver, you would fail within two months or three months or four months uh, because maybe you get budget to build a magazine, you get budget to get all the content in, but we all know it takes a long of time until it's evaluated, ranks, and then really drives and return. So I wouldn't put revenue always as the first indicator. Um, I think, you know, we should much more work with assumptions, also hypothesis that we come up with that, like, hey, we think that it will increase X, Y, Z, um, and then work with those assumptions. And if it works, then okay, but if not, then it fails and we move on to the next one. But especially the, the, the revenue thing is based on the project, especially when it's content projects, it's, it can be really difficult. I wouldn't put this as a priority for content projects. Sure. Uh, Ellie, we do have one more minute. So we would love to hear your perspective and then we'd move on to the Q&A. Yeah, the only thing I would add is that it's not a given that you can even get this data. 
when we're talking about enterprises. And like, I, I can't tell you how many times I've come into a company where they don't even have Google search console. And I'm talking about companies that make hundreds of millions of dollars per year in revenue overall. And they think they want to do SEO, but they don't have access to any of the data. And then we get access to search console and they don't even know how to tie it into their own reporting. So figure out if they've even made revenue off of SEO is like almost an impossibility. So these are ideals. I would love to know revenue, but that's part of being a successful enterprise SEO is like getting that other team to figure out how to do that reporting, getting that other team to figure out how to access the APIs and really build it all together. Sometimes I spend months like building that and like, you know, coaching them through how do you build that reporting before we even do the reporting. Fair enough. Uh, I think time really, really flies. Uh, I think this was um, 40 minutes and they just whizzed by with all these uh, these years of wisdom with, uh, with, these, with the strong panelists that we have. Uh, I hope it opens doors to more questions um, in the chat. So use the chat to ask any questions that you would want uh, our, our fantastic panel to answer. And um, we, we will now have the Q&A session for the next 10 minutes. Uh, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that people might have. So we are going to start with the first question that's come in. Do you think um, that keyword-driven SEO will remain in the SEO industry for a long time since semantic SEO, which is topic and intention based, is now uh, noticeably on the rise. Um, Kevin, well, would you like to take that? So, somebody wanted to jump in, I'm happy to. No, no, no worries, no worries, go first if you like. <laughs> okay, cool. So to me, Listen, like keywords are not going to go from as going to go away from SEO completely uh, as long as Google has this in my mind. But limiting our understanding to to just keywords, I think, is 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 not doing us a service. In my mind, keywords are the most atomic units of um, of something that drives traffic to a page. The next larger units could be a topic, but I actually prefer the concept of user intent, right? And I think this is like. The, uh, the the question implies topic or intention based. Um, you really want to get to what people try to accomplish with the search, and that's also what Google is trying to get to. And so the way that I typically explore it for I still do some stuff like keyword research, but I map keywords to intents and take into account that pages can take for uh, can rank for thousands of keywords sometimes, and that's because they fulfill a certain user intent. So again, to me, keywords are a small part of a language, whereas the, the bigger, more important piece is actually the intention and keywords can help us identify an intention that people have. And in my mind, good keyword research these days has the user intent included. And I'm not talking about the old school definition of user intent, like informational, transactional, navigational. That stuff doesn't matter anymore. Uh, I'm talking about the actual intention, like what are people actually trying to accomplish? They're not, they're not, you know, like seeking information can mean 50 different things. It can be inspiration, it can be tutorial, it can be comparison. Those are different user intents. And uh, that that to me is kind of the, the gateway that keywords enable us to understand. Absolutely. Uh, and or sorry, you, you were wanting to no, add. Worries. Yeah, for me. So so for me, it's it's totally the same. So for me, it's, it's, it's more, you know, you're discovering a topic and you need to understand what are the different, you know, maybe also subparts of this topic. So I probably know that that, that Bern will, will talk about his example of, you know, white sneakers and and all the different kinds it can has within the journey. And you really need to understand what is actually the intent of the user. So, so for me, it's, it's, it's really discovering the topic and, of course, connecting the intents to that. So as, as, as Kevin said, so everything is, is um, yeah, I can underline that. So, but um, as I said, if you, if you don't understand, you know, um, how, you, how you identify transformers, for example, how you really understand what is the intent of the query, um, you will lose somewhere. Absolutely. Um, we have another um, question uh, which says, in Europe, the future of GA is compromised. Absolutely. We, we can't uh, agree more than that. Um, can you recommend other tools for metrics and data? Search console. 
<laughs> I, I think GA has been compromised globally for a really long time. I haven't seen GA agree with Google Search Console, I don't know, 10 years. And you know, I, I love when like I, I'm working with a team and they're like, well, our SEO traffic is climbing. Google Analytics is is like skyrocketing. And then you you look at it and you're like, well, you're triple counting. So you're not. <laughs> or, or the opposite. They're like, we have a we think we got hit by an algorithm update. And then you're like, well, you removed the tracker from all of your new pages. So Google Search Console says you're fine. Google Analytics is just wrong. So I think it's it's been compromised because it's it's so hard to manage given the way it's set up. Absolutely. Oh, Bjorn, would you like to add anything to that? No, um, I think uh, Search Console is from an SEO perspective the way to go. Um, if you can and you have the resources to do, then, you know, you know, working on an own session server is your business, um, if your business um, model is dependent on the data at the end of the day, like we are. So we, we are based on clickouts. Uh, we can't rely on Google Analytics. We have our own session server. So each session that comes in will be attributed uh, to a marketing channel and, and, and then it will be converted actually. Um, so we are not using Google Analytics other than for ad hoc analysis to get an indicator of, you know, some events that we are tracking there. So can't really say something about it. Uh, we agree. Um, so the next question we have is how do you handle uh, enterprise stakeholder ideas that go against any SEO best practices? Oh, my God, the bureaucracy that comes with it, uh, especially when you don't have any data to back it up. Uh, I can see Kevin smiling, so I'd love for you to answer it. <laughs> well, you know, if generally... There's a couple of ways to handle that. And 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 as always, it depends a little bit on where it's coming from, right? I think there are some occasions where it's fine to say, listen, we have different priorities and this doesn't really fit into a roadmap. And, you know, and then in other cases, you really just want to like listen to the person, uh, especially when they're a, an important person in the company and just hear them out. Sometimes they also have an idea that at first it sounds like it, it actually is destructive and you... You hear them out and you realize, oh no, it's actually it's actually a pretty good idea, just poorly articulated or formulated or so. But you you know you don't want to. I, I think as a as SEOs we can sometimes be cocky and just reject ideas out of the bat. So my my painful lesson that I learned is to hear people out and really understand what their reasoning is and how they're thinking. Don't especially when it's when it's executives, right, or C suites. Don't forget they're usually well connected. They might have spoken to somebody who has a different set of ideas and they might actually have something really valuable. So. That's that's kind of my first uh, thought, and then the second thought is to just educate people. There can be such a it can it can be such a productive um, meeting that you can have with somebody who brings an idea that doesn't really fit into your strategy, and you just explain that hey, this is why it doesn't fit. This is how we reason, and 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 you know why we do the things that we do. And they might come out of that meeting, and they might just be very very educated. They might become advocates for you or proponents. So. Digital React probably just say, yeah, like, I don't have time for you. This doesn't work. Go away. But, but I urge you to, to consider the opposite and, and hear people out and talk to them. And just to add to that, like, who says it's an SEO best practice? Like, if you're going to die on that hill, you better make sure you're really right. Like, I, I've seen people, like, you know, fight tooth and nail for something they think is an SEO best practice because some executive says they want to do it. You better make sure you're right before you get them to change your mind. So it's not worth it. And then one funny anecdote on that is I once had a, an engineer recommend something that I, I didn't agree with. And he said, well, I read it on Moz and he sent me the link and I wrote the article. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we come to a, to, um, to the end of this wonderful panel discussion. Thank you everyone for your time and for joining us uh, for the show. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the recipes we cooked as much as we did. Uh, I wanted to say another big thank you on behalf of the whole OnCrawl team to all the speakers involved. Uh, the recording of the webinar will be sent to you in a few days, so keep an eye out. Um, this was the last episode for today. But we'll be back tomorrow with three more iconic SEO recipes. Uh, the first one would be grilled agency SEO. The second would be spicy SEO and search intent. 
And um, the third one would be algorithm updates layer cake. So thank you so much and see you tomorrow once again. Thanks, Bye. Thanks. Thank you.